this is Kim Richards from RockTheStageNYC.com with this free vocal tip. This tip is on a constant acoustical space within the throat. And the myth behind speech level singing um, and why it produces thin small voices. Um, this being twofold, acoustical space. What do I mean by acoustical space? Well, acoustical space means space inside your mouth and inside your throat when you produce sound. It can either be small or wide. The myth of sort of speech level singing or sing like you speak is that they try to take the, the acoustical space of speech and bring it into singing. Especially as you go up into the higher ranges, all it does is create a very small, lacking in depth sounding voice. Um, I have not heard one speech level singing sort of person who has a very big, full sounding, deep, resonating voice. Their voices all tend to sound very thin. Um, edgy, yes, resonant, yes, but thin. Um, their mix sounds, their upper mix, are not very full sounding. And by the time they get to high C and their, their E and their F5s, their voices are almost in whistle tone. Very, very, very thin, very, very small. Um, I mean, it's okay for the upper, the F5 and stuff like that, but down here, the, G, the A, the G, the F, it shouldn't sound really small. It should sound big and full. <clears throat> the problem with speech level singing is the amount of acoustical space in the throat. Um, with singing, you need much, a much wider acoustical space. That's why in pure sort of classical or bel canto uh, training, they talk about a wide open throat. Um, now, in speech level singing, they talk about a neutral larynx. Okay. Uh, but what does that do with the acoustical space in your throat? Nothing. By using more of a breath compression, what they call diaphragmatic intercostal breathing, uh, which is down here, um, by supporting the voice more from the midsection, we create a more relaxed and widened throat. Uh, Caruso used to talk about maintaining a square opening in the throat. Not very descriptive, but I mean in terms of what he means by it's just wide this way and wide, it's wide that way and it's wide this way. Um, but you're always thinking outward with your neck, nothing inward. Um, laryngeal singing, which is like uh, speech level singing, um, which is you're manipulating the larynx more to uh, do most of the work rather than breath, um, you end up with small voices. So we want to stay away from laryngeal type singing. Um, now I'm going to teach you how to get more of a diaphragmatic intercostal breathing type of sound. More of a pure bel canto sound. More of an apoggio type sound. Um, and that's by practicing some very simple diction without moving the mouth. We open the mouth just slightly like a ventriloquist would and say our vowels. A, E, I, O, U. Try to get them very clean, very distinct, very clear. A, E, I, O, U. Without moving your mouth, think of it as, as I can't let people, you know, you have a dummy and you know you can't do that. A E I O U. A E I O U. And you feel that you're manipulating it here in the throat, back here. The acoustical space in the throat, in the mouth, is staying relatively consistent. And the throat is basically shaping the vowels. You don't need to move the mouth and the lips to make those sounds. You don't have to do A E I O U. You don't have to do that. That's overcompensating. And you're basically using muscles in the face that have nothing to do with producing speech. Um, so if we take this sort of into an exercise, we'll start here on middle C. A E I O U. And sing them on pitch. A E I O U. A E I O U. here in my throat rather than my larynx. And my mouth isn't moving at all. What happens is I instinctively start supporting from deeper in the body. Because nothing in my, in my neck is feeling it needs to help compensate. The outer circle muscles here 
are feeling a need to sort of come into action. The degrastric muscles under here aren't really coming into action. Everything stays relatively relaxed. Your, your larynx stays relatively neutral, but you get a much bigger sound. Nice and big, right? from here. Uh, a quick tip on breath compression when I talk about down here. It should feel like an outer expansion when you tense at the start of your phrases. A, E, I, O, U. Your body should flex down and out. A good way to kind of get this movement is to hiss in little spurts. And you feel your sort of stomach and your sides flex outward and then the breath comes out of your mouth. That's the movement, that's the physical movement you want to do. A, E, I, O, U. But you're pushing from here out. This gains a very relaxed, open, wide throat. Because the brain is focused down here rather than here. A, E, I, O, U. Now I'm not saying sing with a mouth that doesn't move. But when you do go to sing, you'll find that you're not really overcompensating. You use very minimal movement in your mouth to create sound, but your voice will still be articulate. Your diction will still be clear. A good way also to practice this is to open your mouth like this and say your alphabet. It's okay to close your lips to say like P and B and all that, but A, D, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, 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 Q, R, S, T, U, Z, W, X, Y, Z. And practice that. Do them really slow. A, D, C, D, E. If you know the ABC song, sing it like that. A, D, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, O, D. Q, R, S, T, U, D, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time I want you to sing with me, I'm back in kindergarten again. But what that's doing is it's basically helping you keep a relaxed face, relaxed throat, a stable larynx, uh, a somewhat stable tongue. So when you go to do sing, they won't feel like they need to really come into action and overcompensate. You're, you're teaching your brain how to sort of create sound without overcompensating, making it very simple. So when you go to sing, A, B, C, D, A, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. I don't feel the need to move a lot of my face. Just minimum. There's none of that big sort of uh, stereotypical, you know, uh, cartoon sort of ah 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 so, I hope this gives you some insight into uh, jaw movement and, uh, and acoustical space within the throat. I hope it didn't bore you to death and confuse you. What the hell? Until next time, this is Kevin Richards from Rock the Stage, NYC.com. Make sure you go over to the website, sign up for the newsletter, sign up for the blog, where I give more vocal tips like this. Subscribe to the channel up above um, so that you're always abreast of uh, when I'm putting up new videos and stuff like that. Uh, over at the blog, I put up other videos and other exercises and articles and stuff that I don't talk about here on YouTube. So you get extra free stuff over there as well. Till next time, this is Kevin Richards. Till next time, see ya.